Hello, welcome back. Now let's take a look at the third category of ratios. This is called the asset utilization ratio. Sometimes they're referred to as turnovers. And again, these state ratios measure the efficiency, the operating efficiency of the firm. Uh, one characteristic, characteristic of this type of ratio is that oftentimes the, value, the variables you're using comes from different financial statements. Take a look at the inventory turnover ratio. Here the numerator is cost of goods sold, which comes from the income statement. And the denominator comes from the balance sheet. So we have a dynamic here. Um, the the income statement is relatively straightforward. Remember that the income statement is a flow statement that represents the income or the any variable that we represent on the income statement is accumulated throughout the entire year or quarter. However, for the balance sheet, it's a single snapshot in time. So let me go over a really um, simple example that may help highlight this problem. Let's say the business is a, is a limousine company. You start the year with one vehicle, and let's say the limo costs $100,000. So in the beginning of the year, you have in total asset $100,000. Business is tremendous, so you find that you are always overbook. And to satisfy the demand, you decided that you'll buy another vehicle. So in June, you bought another limo. So and let's say that's also a hundred thousand dollars. So by the end of the year, your total asset is two hundred thousand dollars. As I said, business is really, really fantastic. So over the years, let's say you were able to generate revenue of $500,000. The question is, did you generate $500,000 using one car or did you generate $500,000 using two cars? So pause the video, think about it, write down your answer and come back. Unfortunately, the answer is it depends, right? Realistically, you were not able to generate $500,000 with one car because you were at capacity. So the $500,000 was generated using one car for six months and then two cars for the remaining six months. So to say that you generated $500,000 using two cars is not accurate either because had you had two cars throughout the entire year, you might have been able to generate more than $500,000 but you definitely couldn't have generated $500,000 using just one car. So what should you use as your total asset? Should you use $100,000 in the beginning, $200,000 in the end, or sometimes we may decide to use an average. So in this case, you may decide that the average is the best way to represent um, the true state of the firm that in this company we generated five hundred thousand dollars in revenue using six, one cars over six months and two cars over the remaining six months so on average our asset in investment uh, or our asset in operation is one hundred fifty thousand dollars so that's the dilemma we face when we are uh, working on the efficiency ratios to keep things simple in our example, we will use the ending value at this point for the balance sheet items. So again, that's just to keep things simple so that we highlight the calculation rather than um, complicated. When you're applying these formulas, uh, applying these ratios in real life, you need to take a look at the, at the particular firm. Sometimes the change from the beginning value to the ending value is not significant, and therefore it makes very little difference whether you use beginning or ending. On the on the other hand, if you go through the quarterly statement and you saw that the firm increased its capacity tremendously in the first quarter, in that case, the ending balance makes more sense because the majority of the year you were operating using a larger capacity. Uh, so the answer is you really have to dig deep to understand what is going on in the company. So at this point, I'm going to have you pause the video and go ahead and use the income statement and the balance sheet to help you compute the inventory ratio, days in inventory, and come back and we will check your work. Did you get 1.1959 times for inventory turnover? 
Fantastic. And for days sales and inventory, we take 365 days divided by our inventory turnover. So we get 305 days. Now let's take a minute and think about these numbers and what do they mean? So what that means is in this case, the inventory for this particular firm sits on the shelf for 305 days before somebody buys it. Is that good or bad? Well, it depends on the industry. If this company is a grocery store, it's very, very bad. You don't want to buy something from a grocery store that has been sitting on the shelf for 305 days. If this is an antique jewelry dealer or an art gallery, that may not be too surprising. Sometimes a painting may sit around for a year or two before it gets so. So all this number has to be interpreted in context. So for more practice, I'm gonna have you uh, pause the video again and go ahead and compute receivable turnover and days sales and receivable and the remaining um, numbers. Okay. Go ahead and check your answers. Hopefully you get the same answers as I do. And even if you don't, um, then there are additional resources that I want to point you to so you can check your work further. Uh, so in the slides included in um, this file, um, there are more detailed calculations. So on this individual slide, it shows you the value that is for cost of goods sold, the value that is for inventory. So you can check what, where you make the mistakes if you do make some. Uh, the same is true for receivable. So we have revenue sales is $850,000 and accounts receivable is $316,000, $550. And the days sales and receivable is turns out to be 136 days what that means is it takes 136 days for this company to collect from its customers so that, again that's a very long time and if your company is looking at 160 36 days to collect from your customers you may want to consider um, additional ways to get money faster. Um, either give incentive cash discounts for your customers to pay sooner or um, you can factor your accounts receivable meaning you sell it to a bank so you can get your cash sooner. Um, of course um, both of them is going to cost money but this is a cost benefit analysis. It, um, is the cost of um, obtaining the cash faster beneficial to your firm and is it justifiable for the cost. So this is the uh, uh, we end this video here in the next video we're going to look at profitability measures